Hey guys, uh, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to rotate an object relative to a hinge point. So basically what I have here is I have a uh, part, just a random part, I'm going to be calling this door, and I have its counterpart which is a hinge, and this is going to be uh, the part that represents the position where the part is rotating relative to. So if you notice, if you just select a part and then you just rotate it in any kind of or on any axis, uh, it's always going to maintain its still position. So it's not going to actually change position, only rotation. So that tells us that uh, when we're rotating this object, that it's rotating relative to its center position. So it's not changing position. However, if we tell the part to rotate relative to, say, this point right here, um, then it is going to change position because it's no longer in the center. The position is no longer in the center, so it's no longer going to remain uh, equal on each side. So the first thing I'm going to do is just open or uh, insert a script in server script service, and we'll start working with the rotation. So let's get door from workspace, local door equals workspace, child door, just in case something goes wrong, local hinge, equals workspace, wait for child, hinge. All right, so now we want to define some constants, so just some values that are going to remain constant in our script so we don't have to keep uh, recalculating them. Uh, one constant I want to have is going to be the hinge's position. So I don't, want to, I don't want to change the hinge's position, but in some cases, maybe if you're actually going to be moving the entire door model, um, you would want to not make the hinge a constant because then uh, your door would always teleport back to its fixed position. Uh, but in this case I want the hinge and the entire door to stay in the same place so the hinge point where it's rotating around is going to be a constant. So I'm going to say local, uh, I'll say hinge pose for position equals hinge dot position. Alright, now I'm actually going to get into rotating it. So um, for this, I'm going to start off simple. I'm not going to go too in-depth into this. We're just going to use a for loop, uh, which is going to convert its increment into degrees, and then we're going to turn those degrees into radians, um, which is what you need for angles, C-frame angles, that is. So we'll start off by saying for i equals and 1 through 360, so 360 iterations, and that tells us that each iteration we are going to be rotating the part by one degree. So this is where things can get a little bit tricky, um, but it's not as hard as it looks at first. So um, what we want to do is set the door's C-frame, so door.C-frame. Uh, we want this door's C-frame to have a different relative position. So we're not going to be setting the door's C-frame to its own position we're going to be setting it to its uh, relative position um, that we're rotating around, which is the hinge position. So we want the door to actually be in this hinge's position, and then we're going to offset that position um, to get it to be in this spot. So the door's C frame is going to be uh, C frame new. So create a new C frame um, with just a position matrix of the hinges position. So, so at this point, if we just left it at this, um, our door would just be positioned right here, right in the center. It would be, there'd be another uh, half of a stud right there, but it would be right in the middle of the uh, hinge position. But before we offset it, we actually want to rotate it first. So once the uh, parts position is here. We then want to rotate it in whatever direction we're going to be rotating it in. In this case, the uh, the y-axis. So we're going to be rotating it on its y-axis uh, once we've positioned it, and then we're going to offset it in the direction that it's facing. So that is going to keep our part um, rel it's in the same relative position as our hinge as it protrudes in the direction it's facing. So let's go here, and then we're going to multiply it by a rotation matrix, so C frame dot uh, angles. And 
like I said before, we're going to be rotating it on its y-axis. So 0 for x and dot rad i for y. So each iteration, uh, i is going to increase by 1 until it gets to 360. So that tells us that, um, like I said before, each increment of i is going to be another degree. Um, and because we have to pass in radians to, ang uh, to c -frame angles, uh, we have to convert that using math.red. And then our last step is going to be offsetting the position um, again by whichever uh, direction it's facing. So we're going to say cframe.new, and this is the offset cframe. So cframe.new, uh, and you can get its direction, by the way. Um, well, it's not really its direction, but in this context, we're going to be calling it direction. Um, because that's the way it faces when we're offsetting it. Um, you can get its direction by knowing uh, its size, its size vector, which coordinate is changed once you resize it in the direction that it's facing. So in this case, if I resize this part in the direction that I want it to be offset to, you can see in the properties window under size, uh, when I do resize it, its x value is changing, so uh, x is going to be where we are offsetting it to. So let's go back to our script and offset it in our x value. And so our offset is actually going to be half of the size that we are working with. So right here, we already established that we're working with its x size. And so when this part is positioned at exactly uh, its hinges position, it's going to have three studs on each side. And of course, we want to move it outwards another three studs, which is conveniently half of its uh, x size. So its x size is 6 divided by 2 is 3, and we don't want to offset it in any other direction. And when we're done with that, we're going to come down here and add a weight so we can actually see this happen instead of it happening instantly. Uh, and let's go to test start, and we should see that it makes one full rotation before coming to a stop. So it started right here, I believe, and then it should stop exactly right here. So it aligns perfectly with the z-axis. So I think that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, you also might notice that this kind of, that the part seems to kind of like merged a little bit with the hinge. Um, this usually isn't a concern, the only reason that it kind of pushed backwards, or at least seemed to, is because uh, we, we offset the uh, position by half of this object size. So that's going to be three studs, but uh, the hinge itself actually has a size, which is one stud. So if we wanted to actually have this part be perfectly uh, in line without uh, intersecting, then we would actually need to also add uh, half of the size of our hinge as well. So if I went back in our script here and I added half of a stud, which is just 0.5, uh, and then we run this, you should see that we have a full rotation with uh, the door being on the outside of the hinge. A little bit of intersections on the corners, but that's because it's rotating in a circle and obviously those corners are going to intersect with that. So that's how you'd make one full rotation. Uh, obviously, if you wanted this to just keep going on and on forever, you could just throw your uh, for loop into a uh, while loop. So just have an infinite, any kind of loop, really. Um, just any kind of infinite loop. Throwing your for loop with all of this in there is just going to repeat the same thing. However, however, I actually don't advise you to use this method if you're actually going to be uh, putting this in your game or something, especially not in a server script as I have here. Uh, if you're going to be animating objects like this, it should always be done with run service um, in a local script. Even if you're not using run service, it should still be done in a local script uh, because all of that information is being processed on your client, so it should be uh, from the client to animate those objects. There are possibly some cases when using filtering enabled where you might want uh, all players to see an object being rotated um, when it's when a certain player does something. 
Uh, in that case, you could use a server script. I would still recommend using remote events for that, but that's a whole different uh, subject. So anyway, what I would recommend for using or for animating parts uh, locally is definitely uh, run service inside a local script. And that is what I will demonstrate right now. Okay, so now I have a local script in the starter GUI with uh, part of our old script before, just getting the door and the hinge. And now we're just going to modify this a little bit to fit with our local settings. So uh, let's get the run service. So run service equals game service run service. And we also want to define our constants like we did before. Um, so I'm still going to be using the uh, doors hinge as a constant, or its position as a constant. So local hinge pose equals uh, hinge dot position. And I actually just realized that I kind of violated my uh, naming conventions there for a second. Usually constants. Uh, for variable names are written in all caps, so I probably should correct that to keep consistency with my writing style. So say uh, hinge pose in all caps, separated with an underscore. That's typically how you would write uh, constants in a lot of different languages with, I don't know, some share the same name, naming conventions, uh, some don't. You don't have to worry about that. It's just something that I... Uh, Get a little picky about. But anyway, our next constant is actually going to be uh, time. So instead of using step increments to uh, move the progression of our rotation, uh, we're actually going to be using time. And time is definitely something that you want to get used to uh, when animating because it's always going to be very smooth and it's always going to be exactly the same. So in this case, uh, I want to define the amount of seconds that it's going to take for a full uh, 360 degree rotation to uh, complete itself. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call this duration, and I'm going to say that I want the rotation to be complete in five seconds. So now I'm going to come down here, I'm going to set up my run service event. So run service dot render step, that's going to fire every render frame. Connect that with our function. And now you might have to bear with me here because things are going to get a little bit mathy, but it's nothing that is too complicated. So um, our degrees, the amount of degrees that we have each time that our render stepped event fires is going to have to be based on time. So we have to figure out how we're going to make it so that we can get um, how much time has passed relative to our duration. So um, for this we would actually use the modulus operator, which um, is an arithmetic operator that will divide two numbers and then return the remainder. So that's very useful for this case. So we can say, uh, we can use the tick function, which just returns uh, the Unix time, which is in seconds. Um, and we're going to modulate that by our duration. And obviously we do want a variable here that's invalid syntax. We'll, we'll make this uh, how many degrees we are currently at. So this is essentially going to record um, our progress every five seconds and then reset back to zero um, after five seconds or just before five seconds, uh, close enough. So let's say five seconds has passed and tick is now a multiple of five. Uh, if you then divide that by five, which is our duration, uh, you're going to get a remainder that is close to zero. There is going to be, it's not going to be exactly zero, because tick returns a very precise amount of time, so you're going to have uh, seconds and then your decimal places, which is going to be your tenth of a second, hundredth, uh, thousandth, etc. So it's not going to be exactly zero, but it is going to be close enough. Okay, I think I've explained that thoroughly. So let's go over here. Um, we want, okay, so I've already established that. Uh, now we want the percentage uh, between our duration and how much time has passed. So uh, what we're going to do for that is just divide what we have here by our duration. So this is going to give us a number between 0 and 1. Um, and now this puts us in a very uh, convenient position because now we have the percentage of time that we start with to our duration. So now all we have to do is just multiply 
uh, 360 degrees by that percentage, and we get how many degrees are in each uh, progression of time. So I'm going to go over here, and we're going to say 360 times all of that, which is going to be our percentage. So that's how many degrees we have uh, each step, but based on time. Now we can come down here and do the same thing that we did in our other script before. So we're going to say uh, door.cframe equals cframe.new. We still want it to be hinge position. And then multiply that by cframe.angles. We're still rotating it on the y-axis. Uh, so math.rad and then our degrees. So deg uh, 0, and then just offset it again by its uh, x value divided by 2. So that was 3, and we could add the half of a stud that our hinge takes up, and then nothing on the y and x, or y and z. Uh, and that should be it. So let's go ahead and test this as a player, since you can only use... Uh, render stepped in a local script, which can only be done if you have a player. Um, and we should have the same result, except we can definitely control our uh, progression a lot better. It's also going to look a lot smoother. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty good. We can do a lot with that. So if I wanted to slow this down a bit, I could go in my script that's controlling it. And I could say um, I want it to rotate a full hundred, a full 360 degrees every 60 seconds. So every minute, it'll make a full rotation. If I enable that again, you can see it goes much slower. It's much more precise, and I think that is really decent. So that's going to be it for this video today. Uh, if you want the source code, uh, all the source code that I've written in this video, you can. Uh, look at that in the description. There'll be a link to that. Um, and if you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll get back to that as soon as possible. And uh, yeah.